Now, live from Studio B, two guys whose business cards simply say, I'll call you. It's the bottom line with your host, DJ and KJ, asking tough questions, getting real answers, and sorting through it all to get to the bottom line. Good evening and welcome to the bottom line. Took a little while to get here. Had some technical issues on the YouTube side. I'm David Jennings, of course, joined by Ken James. Ken, thanks for getting us on. Yeah, I, I, I'll tell you what, man. Technical difficulties is our going. This is the, the bottom line of technical difficulties <laughs> is what this is. I want to quickly thank all of you for joining us here tonight. Looking forward to a very special guest. Going to be in the studio with us a little bit later, Greg Fleming. Ken, let's quickly uh, move into what the, the bottom line is all about. We've gone over this a couple of the times uh, through test runs the last couple of nights, but let's kind of get out there what we're trying to achieve and where we, the direction we think the show is going to go in. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, we've said it two or three times now, and I know uh, on the few test runs we've done is, you know, we want this to be a show for the community to uh, to bring the community together. Uh, we want people to be passionate, have have you know good ideas. Uh, and, and, and bring their views, call us with their views, whatever you want to do. You know, we, this show is, like I said from the beginning, it's no holes barred. A lot of issues with the sound. I'm getting in from some from text from the listening pub- public. Uh, the sound is not uh, of good quality. I don't know if we can troubleshoot that at the moment or if we need to take a quick break and try to remedy that. But uh, definitely want to get the message out there tonight. Want to be very fair to our guests. It's good enough to join us, and uh, we'll try to get that cleared up here in just a minute. Ken, if you will, let's take us to a quick break, and then we'll come back with our guest, Greg Fleming, here on the bottom line. All right, we'll do it. We'll be back here in uh, just a short few. Let me see here. We could get into one. No, it's good. And we're getting reports now that the sound quality has improved uh, dramatically, so uh, we're, we're, we're happy about that. Appreciate the input from you listening in at home. Uh, let's quickly talk about what we're wanting to do here on the bottom line and kind of the ground rules, if, if you will. Uh, there won't be any filter on passion. There won't be any filters on ideas or, or, or comments. What we do ask is that we keep it respectful. Uh, we think that debate is good. We think that conversation is good. I don't have a problem with disagreeing sometimes, uh, and you've heard me say this before, the very best you can do is agree to disagree, but that needs to take place in a in a respectful manner. Uh, the community does not move ahead when, when, when we're tearing each other down, pulling in different directions. So uh, as we get into not only this show, but shows in the future, I want to keep it a... a the punches above the belt, so to speak, exchange some good, healthy, uh, informative debate. And I think that'll help this community in terms of uh, addressing issues uh, that affect us each and every day. Oh, no doubt about it. Um, you know, we were talking earlier uh, we, when we first came in about, you know, there's nothing wrong with people that, that want to express their opinions. No one's opinion is better than the other one. Uh, not mine, certainly. Not not DJs, you know, Greg, anybody that comes into this show wants to sit down and, and speak passionate about what they believe in. Then we want you to come in and sit down with us or call in, that's, that, whichever you want to do. But uh, at, at the end of the day, the bottom line to it is, is everybody's opinion counts and to make Bruton better to bring Bruton together better uh, more so than it has been we've got to all be able at the end of the day to agree to disagree I'll tell you and, and once again just just glad to be here we have a very special guest with us here tonight and he was he was good enough to be here Greg Fleming Greg I appreciate you coming in you're kind of the uh, guinea big guinea pig so to speak a lot of people had some uh misconceptions of what the show was going to be about a lot of people just plain didn't know uh but uh, excited about you being here and, and thanks appreciate for joining it. us thank you i appreciate the the privilege greg i, I want to get your opinion on this because it's your first time here at studio b and i can tell you i saw this room or this this facility before the construction t- took place and i want to get your viewpoint on what you stepped into here tonight oh i was amazed when i walked in it is it's 
unbelievable. I tell you it's that nice. That goes to Ken James, of course. Ken, I guess yeah. it's okay to mention the contractor's name, Scotty Barra. Sure, uh, came is. in here, did yeah. an excellent job, you know, outfitting this. You've uh, customized the table and and the work you've put in to make the uh, the bottom line a reality. You're to be commended for that, and I thank you. Well, I, I listen. I appreciate it. I, I got to give all that to uh, to Scotty. Scotty uh, come in to help me out tremendously, and. Uh, we uh, kind of had something in mind we wanted to do, and we did it. And uh, so here we are, and, and tonight we're going to have a, a, a great show, looking for a great show, and, and, and a lot of good things going on. Before we get into it, I also want to thank a, a mutual friend of all of ours. Actually, he's a friend of Bruton, Lance McKenzie. Uh, Lance yes. has uh, made uh, refreshments uh, possible for us here tonight and will throughout the programs to come. So thank you to Lance McKenzie and uh, being thank a you, support, Butch. Being yeah, a we support the bottom line. Yeah, we appreciate these uh, Pepsi products for sure. Greg, let's get into it real quick. And uh, first question I have to ask you, I know you, you you're during your hunting fatigues here tonight. Have you had any luck deer hunting this year? Pretty good. We've had a little <laughs> luck. Sean and I have taken five or six. So I've been on your been uh, been on your Facebook page a time or two and, and seen a couple of squabbles there with with some other guys who may not have uh, had the luck that you and Sean have had. But uh, oh, yeah. uh, congratulations on a good deer season at this point. Well, I appreciate it. Thank you, Greg. Let's. Uh, I, I want to get to this. You know, I don't know how to ease into it. I'm not sure what Spinks Megats and at Red Zone Weather predicted for the weather here tonight in the greater Bruton area, but there is uh, some potential for tornadic activity. And when you walk, when you walked in the door, I don't mind telling you that uh, I felt the wind starting to gust up a little bit out there. The barom- uh, barometric pressure dropped just a bit, but uh, yeah. you are a, a person that goes on record. Uh, you don't mind voicing your opinion, and uh, you you seem to you do seem to be community oriented in a lot of things. Uh, you and I Indeed. have a have a relationship that goes back several years. We've enjoyed each other socially a time or two. We don't necessarily yeah. run in the same circles consistently. But I do know that uh, you do care about the greater Bruton area. Uh, I love you've, Bruton. You've invested, uh, you know, you've raised your family here. Uh, you and your wife, Cindy, of course, have done a lot of tremendous things uh, with helping with some with some causes and some events and supporting some school events and, and whatever's come about. Y'all have uh, been supporters there. So I appreciate you being here. And I guess uh, what I kind of want to get into with you is uh, what do you feel inside, you know, when, when you get out and, and, and you make a comment or you weigh in on an issue, what is the motivating factor there that, that triggers you off to offer a response, I guess. Well, I'm just compassionate about Bruton. And, uh, of course, you know as well as I do, I feel that there's the unity part here is kind of uh, in chaos as far as people siding and, and getting upset when you – you're making a, a comment or have an opinion, which I, I wish that everybody here would have an opinion. And 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 maybe I need to work on it a little more, being a little more passionate and showing some compassion with people. But uh, I just feel strong about this town. I love I love Bruton. And we love T R Miller. I mean, well, you know, just, one, one of the things that, that that Ken and I have talked about for many months, and and I've seen this over the last several years. <laughs> is, is there a sense to there, there seems to be, in my opinion a great sense of apathy in Bruton. There's a very small group of people who make decisions that impact the many. And those people are not bad people. In many cases, they're the only people raising their hand saying, I want to be involved or I'll chair this position or I'll I'll, I'll do this or I'll do that. A lot of people, and my generation is to blame more than any of them. You know, we stand on the sidelines. We don't get involved. We don't roll up our sleeves. We don't try to get ourselves on on committees or on boards to have a greater impact in, in, in in the area. But we choose rather... To, to criticize and complain when things don't go the way we want them to go. And, yeah. and kind of one of the things that we hope to do here with the uh, bottom line is create some more awareness, get people involved. Bruton belongs to every one of us. That's correct. Tigard Miller High School belongs to every one of us. Uh, the, the school system, it belongs to all of us. And we it, The more people you have taking ownership, the more people you have that act respectful towards each other, then what could our community be? Because, uh, I, I, and I'll say this, and, and I said this last night during testing, such a wonderful community. We have, uh, we, we do have some industry. I don't think we have as much as everybody wants, but we're, we're very fortunate to have GP. We have T.R. Miller Mill. We have Grady. We have others. We have a fantastic school system. We have good teachers, good administrators. But the single greatest asset that the city of Bruton has always had, and I've lived here my whole life, is the people. Is the people. We have that. We have great people here. Great black people, great white people. We have people that, that have wealth. We have people that are lower income. But we have great people here. And what I have seen in the last several years is 
we've kind of gone away from what has made us strong, yeah. that, that has been our primary strength. And and I guess maybe I'm looking at the at the pie in the sky, but I look at people who have passion like yourself, who have passion like Connie Baggett, who have passion, you know, all across the board. If we started pulling the ro- this rope in the same direction, so to speak, if we all could get on the same page somehow, some way, understanding that we're not going to agree on everything to the same degree, but if we all pull in the same direction, then what could we be? That's right. But there's a big divide here. There is amongst the people, and and it's a a group on this side and a group on this side, and and and, and most people tell me they wish that they could say what they wanted to say or they what they felt like saying, but they're afraid to because of the repercussions, you know. And I may be guilty of that. I want to change that because you know we all need to pull together. And put our ideas out. Well, I think I think you being here tonight is a huge step in the right direction. Not that I'm saying that you were completely wrong. I'm not suggesting that. You know, right now I'm speaking for myself. I'm speaking for David Jennings. Yeah. But I, th- I think you being here, you towed the line. You yourself said just a minute ago that you might could work on how you address some of the comments on social media. And let's talk about yeah. social media just for a second. Yes. Social media is powerful. I mean, that's the name of the game right now. Whether it's Facebook, whether it's tweeting, whether it's texting, whatever it may be. And this is coming from a guy who just came off a flip phone. Okay, so uh, literally, literally, <laughs> yeah. had, just, had had to force him to come off yeah, of a flip yeah. phone. So, uh, so I'm way behind the game. But uh, when you hit send, it's out there forever. That's right. Unless somebody deletes it. A friend of ours. I don't know if I should. I probably won't call a name. But he sure. he said the other day on social media that, and he'll know who he'll know who I'm talking about. He said that the cell phone and Facebook. Where's the worst two things? Well, it can be if it's used the wrong way. But once again, what if we all took a, all of us, if we all took a little more responsibility, if we all used a little more thought before we hit send or hit enter yes. or whatever the case may be, then it could be a powerful thing. It's all about right. it's all about how you choose to use it. You know, if you want to use it, and, and, and there's a lot of people, I'll be completely honest with you, Ken and I got flooded with texts and phone calls prior to this show going live wanting to know why we want to divide the community. And I said, you know, and I'm sitting here thinking, no. why would you even think we'd be a part of that? Yeah. I mean, no. how does that, you know, no. you know, shame on you for that crossing your mind. I've got children in this community. Kid has children in this community. You, your children have, got, have grown up yeah, here. Grown why up here. would I want my kid to get beat up on the playground because his daddy's a jackass on the Internet yeah. one night a week? You know, yeah. there's one thing that I do know, know something about, and it's about team building. I've had a lot of success doing it. Granted, it's, mo- it's mostly been in recreation type activities, but when you get people, we don't have to be best friends. We don't have to be best friends, but we all live right here. That's right. We all uh, we all gonna walk the same streets. We're gonna shop at the same stores. We're gonna eat at the same restaurants, and we have to see the good in each other and what you can bring to the table, what I can bring to the table, what city leaders can bring to the table, whoever the case may be, and put this thing in the right direction and boot will rise quickly. It'll be sooner rather than later. Yeah, I, you know, you, you made a good point, uh, DJ, just then that uh, you know, uh, we, we, Greg, of course, has, has raised his children here, and, and of course, you're raising yours, I'm raising mine, and, and my wife's a, a, a teacher in the you know, uh, WS Neal school system. Uh, you know, we we have two great school systems. Here. Absolutely, yes. great people, great administrators, great teachers. Uh, great kids, you know, that, that uh, a lot of great athletes, a lot of great academics, uh, you know, I don't think that, that the kids honestly get uh, enough credit a lot of times. And a lot of times with the squabbling that goes on, and, and, and I think Greg kind of touched on this earlier when we were talking off, uh, off, off mic, you know, we spend a lot of time doing that when we could spend a lot more time making things happen. I'll t- tell you this, and, and, and I work at the YMCA as well and, and when I see the stuff going on on Facebook in terms of some of the personal attacks you know some of it's fun some of it's humorous uh, I've laughed at some of it don't, don't get me wrong but there, there gets that point where it gets over the top and it, you lose focus on the issue and it's become personal we've all seen different cases where that's happened and, and, and every time I see that I wish I could get everybody to come to the YMCA they have a, we have a preschool program there it has 50, 60 kids at whatever the number is and they're late in the afternoon down the gymnasium they all go down to play. And, of course, everybody that's been in the YMCA understands the mezzanine that goes on around it. And you look down the gym and see what's going on. Stand at me and Stephen Dickey would go there in the afternoon sometimes, and it was a, a great stress reliever for me, and it kind of put things back in perspective. When you look down the floor, and there's 60 or 70 kids down there, and there's white kids, and there's black kids, and uh, there's kids of, of, of all shapes and sizes. Yeah. They are having the time of their life. I mean, they, they, are, they are just having the time of their life. And, and, and Coach Dickey sits there and looks at it, and he said, if you don't like that, you're not going to like heaven. That's the way it's going to be. You know, you have the, these five and six-year-olds down there who 
hadn't been poisoned in their mind in terms of uh, you know, to think certain ways or have certain prejudices. They're just down there enjoying each other. And I think there's a lot to learn from that from us as an adult community. Uh, I think if you go there and, and take things in perspective, and I know I'm kind of jumping around the table here right now, but I think about the uh, young girl who's missing right now. Oh, yeah. That family's got real problems. I mean, you, you, your heart goes out to them and out to them, and you think about the things they're going through. We all have children. Many people in this room have children. What if we were staying in their shoes? I mean, that would be, that would be you know, bad. That, that'd be bad. You know, and the things we're talking about are just differences. The things we're talking about are things that we can improve upon. That's right. But it can happen, in my opinion, once again, if there's going to be self-destruction. Uh, and like I said, I don't want to filter anybody's passion. I don't want to filter anybody's thoughts. But uh, you and I can sit here and we can talk about Auburn and Alabama. At the end of the day, we're going to agree to disagree. That's right. That doesn't make either one of us a bad person. and doesn't make either one of us friendly towards each other. DJ, let's take a break real quick. Sure. So let's check something. We'll be right back. Test, test, one, two, one, two, one, two. In Studio B, apologize once again for some of the audio difficulties. Uh, this is kind of going to be a fluid situation until we get it completely dialed in. And Ken, I appreciate you troubleshooting it again. Uh, I, I think something's going on with YouTube tonight. It's, it's really, I don't know what it is. I mean, YouTube keeps kind of going up and down on us for some reason. So uh, I don't know. It's, it's just been crazy. But uh, I think we had to cut a good conversation because we had a good conversation going right there. But uh, let me get back. Uh, let me kick it back over to uh, DJ and, and Greg once again. And once again, well, we're taking calls as we speak. The phone number there is uh, scrolling across the bottom of the screen, 251-202-6638. We would love for this program to be uh, caller-driven at some point. You can uh, you can text in on my personal phone if you'd like to, send a, a Facebook message, whatever. like to get a lot of different opinions, a lot of input from the listening community. And Greg, you and I were kind of talking about some of the issues that, that are, are of importance to you. And if you would, I'd like to, for you to bring those out uh, as many as we can anyway. You know, yeah. we're going to have a lot of people listening in, maybe some of the city leaders, maybe some of the decision makers at this point. And uh, let's kind of dialogue at that if we can. What are some of the things that kind of uh, get you triggered, so to speak? Well, I'll, I'll tell you, one thing that, that bothers me a lot is whenever I read things or I hear things, sometimes they're hearsay, but, but I'm told... Uh, of the ways that tax dollars in this town are spent. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you kind of feel maybe they're misappropriated or maybe they should. this, this should have been run through the, the citizens, to, uh, the voters, to get an opinion. Uh, studies that are done for this here and that, water parks and things, and those studies cost lots of money. Mm-hmm. And uh, I've asked several times, can you reprint what the cost of this is? And you can't get civic leaders to post it again, you know, when you hear $200,000 to do this study or 
fifty thousand for this, but that. And and as we were talking, I'd like to. I wish our our, our people could unite more and and be more compassionate with each other and 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 have opinions without getting heated. And I think the other thing was is I'd like to know. You know, I wish there was a way that if our kids did leave, we had some industry here to get them back. And the ones that didn't want to leave for college, that they could stay here and make a good income. I wish there was more industry and. And uh, my buddy Harvey Kingsons preached that, and I'm on the bandwagon with him. He's the one that started it. That rather than have this park or that park, why don't we have something to to, to employ people here, make a, a, a an impact? You know, and, and let me throw this out there uh, just to play devil's advocate just for, just for a minute. I'm not at all saying that uh, what you say that I disagree with. We're trying to have conversation here, trying to, to stimulate some interest to those listening in. And I first want to, to, to hit on the industry. I think it's, and you might agree with me on this, I think it's fair to say that every community in the country is trying to recruit industry. Yes. That's a, I mean, that's a, everybody's, you know, is fighting that fight. Uh, I feel very confident that Bruton and Escambia County a, a, as a whole are trying to fight that fight. When you're in competition uh, with, with, with so many other entities trying to do that, what could Bruton do to position themselves to be more attractive? When you're, when you're talking about the metropolitan areas, we're talking about the outlying areas. Uh, you know, I know they're having some some success down the Atmore area with with Porch Creek kind of yes. serving as the uh, pace setter for their uh, industrial development. What could Bruton do? It's easy to say we need more industry. What can we do to get it? I, 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 honest, DJ, I don't know that. Yeah. I mean, I just don't. We don't have it. We're not big enough to have movie theaters and bowling alleys and multi million dollar activities. Uh, like Pace sure, sure. and 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 of course Atmore is funded with the casino, and and they have, you know, the the funds to do that. But uh, there's not anything. I mean, I don't I don't know how you could get an industry here if there's nothing for a 16 year old to do on Friday night by himself. So and, and you also have to factor in you know, a lot of industries leaving the country as a whole. You know, whether yeah. it's going down to Mexico or wherever it may be overseas. You know, uh, moving those uh, suppliers you know outside the country, so it makes the task that much more daunting. I can tell you that uh, in my, once again, this is my opinion. I don't have the statistical data to back it up. Um, I think Bruton is prime to, to, to really rise here. You know, it, it, yeah. and this is not knocking any of our surrounding communities, you know, whether you're going north, east, west, or south. But you look at what we do have in terms of amenities. You know, I mentioned the YMCA earlier. Yes. I, I mentioned the parks. I mentioned the library. Uh, you know, the, the sidewalk uh, project, in my opinion, was a good thing. I mean, I've, I've gotten, it uh, doesn't show it on camera, but I've actually gotten out and started walking a good bit and have, yeah. and have enjoyed the sidewalks. <laughs> I need to join you. But it's, uh, we do have a lot of good things. And I think, that, you know, if we can, if we could get a break somewhere along the way and get some of those, uh, s- some of that industry right. in here to make it more attractive, you and I were talking off the air. I would love for my kids to have the opportunity to come back here when they finish right. their education. Whether they wanted to or not, that would be up to them. I would want them to, to, to go where they wanted to. I knew very early I was coming back. I oh, didn't yeah. know what I was going to do. I was going to live in Bruton first and get a job second because I love the place, much like you. But uh, I think it would be, and I'm not saying that you're saying this, I think it would be short-sighted to say that our gov- that our city leaders don't want industry here. No, I'm sure they want it. I just yeah. wish that, that there was ways to fight harder or sure. people willing to take on more. Sure. And get something here. I mean, there was a time when they were really trying to bring industry into the to the county when they had the county industrial. That's probably been ten, fifteen years ago. But I don't know what's going on with that. You never hear no more. And you know, and I don't like I said, I don't. I'm not a. I don't have all the, the the spreadsheet in front of me in terms of the pluses and the minuses and the dollars and the cents. But I remember when the Super Walmart was wanting to come and build the new facility. And there, of course, they were going to close the existing building. We know which the furniture store is going to now by the yeah. high school. And there was a lot of people fighting that. So sometimes I would think it would get frustrating. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, I can tell you what the number one uh, tax supplier in the city of Bruton is. It's Walmart. Yeah. Hey, we, we have a, a, a text in. Uh, someone text in would like to know, uh, Greg, did you ever find out how much uh, – the taxpayers, I'm reading off this text, the taxpayers paid for the mural project uh, downtown. Yes, I um, I called uh, the city clerk, Stu House, and requested some public information on that. And there was three or four questions I asked, but to touch on that one, uh, he called me back and said it was 7500 was that from the general fund of the city, or was that like a, a, a grant of some sort, or how do we know where that money came the from? The indication I got from him, I asked him 
Oh, uh, my understanding now, I don't want to step sure. on toes, but my understanding of him asking if that was a grant or donations, and and he, my indication I got from him was is the city put up a good bit of that money into the beautification fund. Okay. So I, from my understanding now, if I'm wrong, right. I'm wrong, but I, I believe the city put up a good bit of that money. And I, and I think that brings up an excellent point. I, and I don't know if, if either of you agree with me or, or, or what the case may be. I think it's very important to know where the money came from. If it was yeah. if, if, if it was purely from the general fund, then yeah, you know. But if, if if an outside source, whether it's the city planner or whether it's the beautification board or whoever it is, if they went out and solicited a grant, you know, on, on their own time, their own energy as part of their job, then maybe they have a little more latitude to do with it what they want, right. to paint what they want. Is that fair to say? Well, the word grant never come up. I asked okay. that. Okay. Okay. So he, it was money's transferred. Okay. And and so. I'm going to play dumb here. I believe that that was transferred. I asked him, I said, did a good bit of that monies or all those monies come from the city? And he said, I, th- I, I, I believe I understand it that way. Okay. So. Well, you know the name of this show, The Bottom Line. Yeah. I'm going to find out. Well. We're going to find out where the money came from because I think until that piece of the puzzle is put in there, it's hard to find or, or it's hard to really have a hard line opinion or a judgment on the project moving forward, is that fair? Yeah, and my and, and and that was my thing when I called. I was upset about it because um, I'm not opposed. I mean, if if if, <coughs> if it, you have an artist and you want to have the a mirror, you, know, you know that's okay. But is there a better way or a bigger impact to impact more people? In other areas or other departments. No, another uh, another question has come in by text that uh, wanted to know: uh, Was it voted on, or did the mayor or uh, Connie Baggett decide on it? I, I can answer that question. Uh, I spoke to uh, to Megan Bradley, who who painted. Uh, she and uh, Allison uh, Foster painted the mural, and uh, she told me that uh, she, among many others, uh, submitted a. Uh, 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 I guess a, a drawing or what have you of what they were going to do, and that uh, hers was picked as the one to to uh, be the one to be painted, and she was uh, contacted and and told to go down and and her, you know her idea won or, or however that was done by the beautification board. So she just submitted a plan or or, or what she thought of what her vision her, of what she wanted the project yeah, to be. That's, and it, and that's it correct. Selected. That's correct, and it well, was selected by by well, the beautification board. And now now. Shannon called me and we talked about this because he wanted to clarify some things up. There was more to be in that mural than she was allowed. She submitted more but was asked to do less and on into it from my understanding. So were all the the lines that people disagreed with or the art form around it should have been more of a painting from my understanding. <laughs> Shannon told me it was it would have been more of a picture scene all right, let me ask this. I, I got to say this real quick. Leave it to to Alan Gord Howard to uh, to, to to chime in. Uh, Get ready to kill switch. I, I, I'm going to quote. Uh, it went from wheels and thrills to colored wall of the name Bruton. Uh, wise funds for our money's use. Now that's that's quoting Alan Howard. Well, let me say this, and and, and good minds think alike. And of course, he might be one of my head twins. But uh, <laughs> and, and I'll, 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 I want to throw this out there. I want to throw this out there. Whether you like it, whether you don't like it, what looks better, the old fair store and Lorch's Diamond Building being up, or that wall painted? Well, we have a sodded area. We have some trees. I mean, the area it it, it has to look nicer now than it did. Okay, if you're asking my opinion, <laughs> I'm asking. Jay, it. I'm asking. There was a nice little archway back there. It looked like they they put up. I thought maybe a wedding could take place there. Good point. And and uh, especially if they grow some ivory around it. This sure. Night, not taking nothing away from the picture now. Sure. I'm just saying if there did something like that happen in a park, then that mural is your wedding picture. Sure. So I was thinking if they were doing something for the choo-choo market, why not melons on vines and sunflowers and cabbages or what? You know, and I know that may sound corny, no. but why not more of a farmer? I, I don't know. That's here's, just, here's my question. And – uh. I never knew the project was going to take place. I rode by there one day and I saw a B and an R painted up there. I'm sure it was advertised. I'm sure it was promoted. Uh, And like I said at the very beginning, I'm the world's worst at not being as involved as I should have been. You mean city council meetings I've been to? 
None. You know how many school board meetings I've been to? None. But yet when things happen, sometimes I get my dander up and I have not uh, not talked to the people who are in there wanting input. I know that those people solicit input all the time. They may have solicited input on this. They may not have. I just My question is this. Is it they ask for ideas for the painting or is it just strictly uh, anybody who's interested submit an idea? Well, well, Greg uh, Greg may know the answer to that question. I, I, well, what I asked, I was told it was put to the beautification board. They were the ones that picked or selected. Well, I actually like what you just said. Megan's I, mean, I, idea. I, I like what you just said. Yeah. Now, Stephen told me that the city council and the mayor voted too. Okay, because well, that was one of my questions. But but here here's a problem I had. If we, if we can if we can touch touch base on something, sure. Uh, there's there's a site, and and we've never got any clarification. We can't get any clarification from the mayor about the re, Bruton Reborn site. Is that a person site that works in the city hall? Or does that represent the city? Is it paid for with city funds or whatever? But anyway, anytime you they post something and you make a comment they don't like or you disagree, you're blocked and deleted. So you may not know what's going on. Well, let me say well, this. In, in, in the spirit of not blocking or deleting, I was just uh, text another text in. Uh, I ought to be hitting the the, the breaking text yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, sound over here. Yeah. Uh, another text in was uh, so... Would you want cabbage and vegetables painted in your wedding pictures? Well, and that and, and that and that's true too. But I'm I'm just saying more of a my thing would have been to finish with the word Bruton and then had some scenery or something. Sure, you know I, I I don't know. And I'll say this before we go any further. I appreciate Alan Howard putting his name to it. Oh, I'm gonna tell you <laughs> no something. doubt. You know this is this is what we're talking about. There, there's no wrong questions no, as long as they're done no. respectfully. And this is what we're talking about from an athlete standpoint. Uh, and, and Ken hit on one of our promos about being a keyboard Rambo. Put your name to it. Huh. I've Put said, your name to it. DJ and I have talked many times. A lot of people ask me, what does keyboard Rambo mean? And I was actually shocked that, I mean, I've got to be honest, I was shocked that no more knew what that meant. I, I mean, I really was. I, I, I was like, are, are you kidding me? I, I had no clue that people did not know what, you know, just no. put the two words together, your keyboard and Rambo. I mean, it's easy to sit behind a keyboard and type whatever, but, you know, only a few are going to be coming and, 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 and get the bottom line of it. You know, and, and again, no. I got I to gotta give kudos to Greg for coming in here tonight and uh, putting it down on the bottom line. Well, I'm sure my Facebook would be red hot when I get home with all what everybody hey, thinks about hey, me. But, but would you want it any other way, Greg? I love it, man. I'll take it. I can take it on both chins. It don't matter. Uh, but, yeah. Well, I'll tell you what. We talk about uh, social media, and we talk about how how powerful it is. And social media is very powerful, uh, you know, and, and as we all know. Uh, another text comment in, uh, hot off the press. Uh, Greg, how many times have you deleted a comment or post on your social media accounts? A low percentage. But, but, but let I, me say this. But let me say this. And Greg doesn't need me to stand up for him. And I'm just, you know, trying to compare apples to apples here. Greg is a private citizen. On his private Facebook page, he can do with it what he wants to. If, if it's a City of Bruton page, then it's for all of us. It's for all of us, and, and as long and, as you're using uh, appropriate language. Yeah, no cussing. But, yeah. but but here's the deal: if if the person and we want, you know, we're not going to call. We're going to be easy and not call any names. But the person in charge of Bruton Reborn page, well, we know who. We pretty much have an assumption. Well, let, let, let me. I don't mean to interrupt. Let me say this. We let's just say like this, you know. DJ and I wanted to ask the question to begin with: What is the if there is a beef, and we're talking about Bruton Reborn? You know, we know the program director or, or yeah. for, for Bruton's Connie Baggett. Is there a beef between Greg Fleming and Connie Baggett? And if it is, what where did it start? What does it stem from? And 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 where is it at right now? Well, it's, it it mostly started whenever. We would comment on Brute and Reborn about some project maybe she was backing or an idea of this or that and saying, no, we don't want to, you know, maybe we don't need a $2 million water park or we don't need this or that. And then it got into, I would hear other people saying that they were deleted and blocked. And and so 
the problem I have with if I, I the problem I have with I'm just going to say brute and reborn side. If 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 I open that side up and I read it, I see 150 people want a two million dollar water park downtown Bruton, but I don't see the 400 that said that's a stupid idea or a crazy idea, or insane idea. So I think constructive criticism constructive criticism is good and opinions are good and I think it should be laid out as whole where everybody can read Ken don't like it, DJ does, Greg can't stand it, and so forth. And that's the problem I have is, is censorship on it. If, in other words, if you look at it, the whole town of Bruton thinks it's the best idea in the world. What you're saying is there's no naysayers on there's that, no that naysayers. Page. You're deleted and blocked. I want to throw this out there because, once again, it's, it's being consistent with being fair. Uh, Connie's not here to answer those questions. Yeah. Connie's not here to, uh, to 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 defend herself. Not that she's had to had to do that necessarily because uh, we yeah. have not attacked her. Nobody here's attacked no. her. But no. I'll, I'll I'll say this, and this is what I believe: take the name, take the face out of it, take the personal feelings out of it. I think Connie Baggett wakes up every single day to try to do the best job she can for the city I, of Bruce. Yeah, I agree with that. I think if Connie Baggett went to the city council and said, "I tell you what, take my salary back." and pay me by the hour, the city'd go bankrupt. Because I can tell you this, I know where you are on weekends, I know where Ken's on weekends, I know where I'm on weekends. We're at ball games, we're hunting, we're doing social activities with family and friends. I can tell you where she is, she's here. Yeah. Whether it's down at the farmer's market, That's right. Rock the Dock, whatever the little project she has going on, she's tied up about 52 weeks out of the year and her effort can't be questioned, in my opinion. No. Do I have, I, have I agreed with everything she's, that she's done? No. Absolutely not. But I can tell you this: I think she cares. Oh, and, once again, uh, and once again, that makes her an asset. That listen, makes her an asset. Think, and we, are, yeah, if we, she I was agree. paid by the hour, uh, her her, the, the, she'd be making six figures or plus a year for the hours that she puts in. Uh, for the for our city, and and, and I believe that I've I've seen yeah. her do that, you know. So, hey, we we've got uh, just text messages flooding in right now. Uh, uh, one of I tell you what, let's take a break. Yeah, and when we come back, we're going to run a little later anyways. We yeah, get started later. Yeah, let's let's take a break. Let's let, when we come back, we're going to get back to uh, we're going to get back to the uh, uh, bottom line of uh, of a couple of different issues, and we'll be back in a moment. <laughs> Bringing it back to Studio B here, still with Greg Fleming, Ken James, and myself, uh, enjoying the conversation here. Starting to get some good dialogue going. Keep the text coming. I'd love to get a phone call. Uh, Ken, bring us the next one. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I guess I'm trying to keep uh, keep them in order here. Uh, Greg, want some thoughts on the uh, upcoming mayor's race? Uh, uh, it says, uh, "Quote Yank, Frank, or Pat." Uh, I, I guess we're talking about Yank Lovis, uh, Frank Nolte, and uh, uh, Pat Poole, I, I guess is who this text is speaking of. Is that all that's running? 
Uh, that's all this text asks for. I, I I don't know who else is running. I I'm just I'm quoting what the text is coming in. I mean, I have finished in the top three before. <laughs> now there's only three, but I was in the top three. It didn't say. It, listen, let me read this again. It doesn't say. Uh, hey, let me back up a little bit. Uh, okay, it, it, no, it doesn't say. It, it's David Jennings. It says Yank, Frank, or Pat. Actually, fair uh, question. Well, I I will say this: uh, the last election. And and Cindy, I, and I and Yank's a good man, and 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 we think the world of, of the naughties too. But the last election, I will tell y'all this, but I won't say how it went. One of us voted for Frank, and one voted for Yank between me and Cindy. Uh, you did, know, did Mercedes go with me? I, <laughs> I can't answer that. Can, can, I, can, can I, I hit a, a follow-up real quick? I, I, I've been to Fort Fleming. But I can't get a vote. I was just asked uh, another, uh, by text again, uh, Greg, do you think David should run again? Why or why not? <laughs> well, I, I'll, I'll tell you, nothing against anybody, but but uh, I think it'd be a good idea if David wanted to run again. I'm I'm going to listen to each one of them now. And I'm not saying I'm going to rethink my vote, but but uh, I'm I'm interested in new candidates and hearing what they got to say. And so, good answer. Yeah, good answer. Uh, no, uh, next next up on the text uh, deck here uh, is: uh, Do you happen to know? Well, I, I'm gonna just quote it. Uh, hey, I want to know what happened with the barrels. I, I'm assuming they're talking about the trash cans. Um, yeah, I guess the drums, um, those things, what they did, they broke some sign ordinance, I believe, because they had advertisement on them. And you got me. Then I heard they were, yeah. they, 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 well, they, they, they were, they were blacked out. I know that the, the Bruton Standard or the Bruton Reborn, somebody came out and said that I think my understanding, that's just, just what I'm hearing, that Connie took those up and repainted them, blacked them out. With some black paint, and I think that maybe then somebody else come back and repainted them with a different type of scenery or something. Because of an ordinance, is that, is that yeah, what you said? So because, a, well, I understand with sign ordinance. Yeah, and I, I think it's fair to say. And once again, uh, she doesn't need me to defend her. I don't think Connie would go around blacking out garbage cans for the heck of it. No, no, no. no. This no, wasn't no. a vigilante thing. Okay, this okay. Was, this okay. was, I think, the mayor right. wanted yeah. them taken up. Sure. And black them out. Yeah. And let's get an artist or somebody in the community that's doing the crafts or whatever to come back and repaint those well, and get them back out. Well, let's throw this out there also. I mean, in a lot of cases, their hands are tied of what can and can't be done. What may be a good idea to you and I could very well be against the city ordinance. Now, oh, we yeah. may not like the city ordinance, and maybe we have some steps where we could try to get it changed. But until that happens, by the letter of the law, it's there's things they, they, they have that's to correct. do. That's correct. Uh, n- next next text. We 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 ready yeah, for bring it on. Yeah, well the the texts are flooding in. I I just got to tell okay, you. I mean, I this, mean, this is the bottom line. Yeah. Uh, the the next text. Uh, Greg and and I, you know you on deck. So I I, I guess I, why, why are you not getting any texts, DJ? I'm, I'm, I'm the only one. That, they they care about what I'm Greg Fleming is uh, has to say. Let me ask you well, let, let me ask Restaurants this. that people come up to me and say, "Man, I wish I could preach it." Hey, son. Are you going to run for mayor? Thought about it uh, several times over the past twenty years, but no, okay. no, 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 no. Uh, let me ask this text. Uh, another text here. Uh, well, I lost it. Let me get it back. Okay, Greg, uh, why were you so unhappy that the blueberry drop was postponed due to weather? Because it, it made no, it made absolutely no sense. I mean, it it should have been something that night for the kids. It should have been, if it was a fireworks show, something small, change your date, call it something else. But it's not January the 8th, New Year's. Let me throw so this in there. That's, that's and, 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 and I went to see, I went to go see Connie about this. I th- and, I, and you and I talked about it. I think you and I may have actually had different opinions on this, on this one. Uh, I went to Connie. I was disappointed that it was canceled. New Year's Eve yeah. is New Year's Eve. That's right. Uh, I do understand there was some extenuating circumstances that they were dealing with with the high rising waters down in the, in, in the, in the floodplain. I just would have thought there would have been a backup plan in place. But, well, but, but, but let me finish. Next year, you know, it, and I, I discussed it with Connie at length. You know, and it, it wasn't just my input; it was everybody's input. I bet next year 
there'll be a backup plan in place. So that makes us better, right? Well, and, and, and it does. But I sent out plan B and C. Sure. But, you know, no, nobody in the city want to listen yeah. to that. But I, I was wondering why if you if you had eight days... Uh, I mean, if you if if you knew it was gonna the 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 creek was rising, river, why couldn't you have? Um, oh, and by the way, Happy Easter. <laughs> <laughs> Valentine's is first, and then we'll do Easter. But anyway, why couldn't we have had it at the? Um, you know, why couldn't we have done something at the uh, municipal stadium? Maybe talk to Coach Riggs and see if that was a possibility. You got a stadium there, you got bleachers. Or why couldn't we have done something maybe at the Bruton Airport, National Guard or Armory area out there? You had a building, a big building. I- I got to be honest with you. I, I wasn't mad about it because it was. I, I was celebrating Elvis's birthday. I mean, so you know, I was like, right. "Hey, man, it's the King's birthday. That's let's, let's, let's celebrate." Yeah, you know. But but when now, you, I think that's where DJ well, and I disagree. Well, about. I was just so excited that Auburn pounded Memphis in the Birmingham Bowl. <laughs> I mean, I'd waited all, I'd waited all year to watch my Tigers play in the Birmingham Bowl, <laughs> and the fact that we got on their wow. head a little bit, I'm telling you something. I and, then we, yeah, and, and then we got the game ball stole from us. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. wow. Well, Cam saved the day for us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> sure. But Plan B and C would be great for the next time on a on a on an expensive event. I'm sure those fireworks and the entertainment and all was expensive. So, and I bet there'll be one. It will. Uh, I, yes, I, I would think. Uh, uh, I, I would think so. Uh, next text coming in. Uh, Next text coming in is uh, well. Let me let me get it pulled up here. I, I, I'm getting them so fast. Uh, <laughs> Greg, you're the draw, man. Yeah, I'm just uh, proud to be here the first time. May book you next week. Quote: Bookie. Speaking of Coach Riggs, uh, how do you feel about Coach Riggs coming out of retirement? Man, I love it, and I know I know I know this man here, DJ, loves it. Oh yeah, I'm excited about it. Yeah, I I, I, I hope we get another five years. He's done a lot for that. Uh, for that he, is a, he is a great person. Great person. Well, I yeah, you know, I tell you, okay, here, listen, we're we're getting them. Uh, wow, I tell you, uh, Greg, what do you think about global warming? Global warming. <laughs> it's cold to me now to be hot in August, so I think we're everything's good. <laughs> Uh, another one here, and, and, and I, I'm, I'm quoting: Who is Lisa Weaver to Greg Fleming? Well. Well, Lisa want, Weaver. You might want to hit the shotgun on this one. Well, we're just. Shot- oh, okay. Well, I, I got to find it. Yeah. Uh, I, I didn't we have to, that. We, we need to test it anyway. I didn't have that up on cue there, DJ. What and you kind of caught me the off shot- guard. Listen, listen. Uh, hold on. We're, 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 we're uh, you kind of caught me off yeah, guard. I know I did. I apologize. We'll get this thing worked out. Yeah. Uh, Just take your time. <laughs> if I'd have been you're ready for this. that one, uh, I, I let me see here. Uh, Oops. Hold on. I hear the gun go. We're gonna shoot that one down before we get into it. Yeah, that did. Yeah, we're gonna shoot that one down. All right, here we go. We got a call. We got a <laughs> we got a call coming in. Yeah. So let's uh let Go ahead, caller, you're on there. I just had a comment regarding uh the conversation about the, the New Year's celebration. Go ahead. Yeah, well, um, I, I went to the uh, the New Year or the the celebration of the New Year's, I guess you could call it, and uh, I'd say it wasn't a bad time. Uh, I thought it was pretty well put together a bit, considering the timeline and everything. But uh, um, and I I talked to County Baggett personally myself about this. I thought that uh. You know, Bruton's a small town, small community, and uh, on New Year's it usually gets outshone by surrounding communities, being Pensacola, Atmore, you know, Mobile, that uh, to make something unique, because that's what a small town has to do, is be unique and stand out from larger communities, that possibly having it the week after it isn't such a bad thing. I mean, people are still going to show up because of the fireworks, they obviously did. I was there. There was probably the same amount of turnout a week after New Year's than there was would be on New Year's Eve. So, 
Yeah, you I, know, sometimes I, change is a good thing. That's a great point, and we yeah. we thank you for your call. That is a good point. It is. I don't know how many people showed. Does anybody? Was it a good crowd? I wasn't there. I I, I didn't go. Uh, but thank you for the call. Thank yeah, you. thank you for the call. Uh, and you know, uh, and I'll say this: I'm going to go well, while you're still getting texts and calls, and I'm going to go back to Connie Baggett just for a minute. I can tell you this, uh, and I've sat with her. I've sat down with her a half a dozen different times. Uh, she'll talk to you, and she'll answer questions. And uh, you know, as, like I said, as a, as a senior, yeah, no, uh, she will. Uh, yes, she will. She'll, she'll she answer. is not afraid. She, she that, may that's not, for sure. She may not tell you what you want to hear, but she'll answer you. Yes, she will. Uh, another text coming in, uh, DJ. Uh, would you ever consider? Having Greg uh, do a Miller football game with you? Absolutely. You want you want to book one right now? I'll do one with you. We got it. I, I'm not the best. At it, now, neither am I, I. But I'll I'll I can, hang with you. We'll do it. That's a done deal. Thanks for the text. Yeah, listen, we, I, I mean they're they're coming fast and furious over here. Uh, Me and Flynn. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think I think pre-game that'd be, meal, a uh, little pregame meal of yeah. ste- steak and bananas. Sounds good. <laughs> I, I, I think that would <laughs> and be. And I get to be on the sideline. Wow. <laughs> we'll do it. Uh, next question, Greg, by text. How many national championships does Bama have? 16. Wait a minute. 16. All 16. <laughs> hey, 16. Get, get, get the shotgun out. <laughs> <laughs> I love Alabama. <laughs> next. Oh, uh, uh, Listen, we're, we're, uh, I keep them coming. Keep them coming. We'll keep asking. 16. That's that's the answer to that question. DJ said, survey says. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong answer. Uh, <laughs> uh, I, I, I guess I have a question, Greg. Uh, in, in talking about uh, getting back, kind of touching on the, the social media thing. Uh, can I take a 20-second timeout? Uh, oh, they started absolutely. it. They started it. 16 national championships. You know, uh, here about a month ago, we had the little snow flurries up in North Alabama. Tuscaloosa, by the Weather Channel, got documented of two inches of snow, and they claimed seven. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the same same text uh, texter uh, wants to know. I guess maybe it's a group question: Is Trump going to make America great again? He's my man. <laughs> it's going to be interesting. I'll say I, that. It's yeah, going to be interesting. I, I, I think, I'm with Trump. I think so. It's going uh, to be interesting. I, I don't think he's a guy that would be scared to press a button. I, I will say that. And that scares me. That that It, it, that it is. reminds me of me. <laughs> <laughs> He'll say whatever and take it on the chin, you know. So. <laughs> you got better hair. You got better hair than Donald Trump. Yeah, absolutely. No, uh, uh, me and you both have better hair than Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> listen, uh, getting back to social media, though, Greg, it, I know uh, from just you know watching and seeing and listening to uh, all the comp, uh, comments, conversations that go on in Bruton about uh, you know sp- sp- specifically your social media, your Facebook page, uh, some of the comments around that page and that kind of thing. Uh, do you find it? Uh, when you when you're out about out and about uh, you know in town, uh, do you find it that uh, people uh, more so come up and agree with you, uh, or do you find it that people more so don't agree with you? Everyone that comes up to me agrees with me, and it's dozens and dozens, and dozens, and it's uh, they work for the city, some they work for the state. As well as maybe the lumber mill or whatever, so it's, well, I, I, it's a wide range. But it's people are you know big you know, in the area, and we we've kind of hit on it a little bit throughout the night. And, and one thing about Greg that is that is appealing, Greg will Greg will put his name to it. You know, Donald Trump puts his name to it. He, he doesn't try to sugarcoat anything. He gets out there. He says a lot of things that people want to say, but just don't. Well, you know, we've seen it tonight on the. T- I mean, somebody call in and put your name to it. Listen, yeah. uh, own it. <clears throat> another t- new text coming in. Uh, Greg, why doesn't the mayor's name ever come up in discussions regarding the city and problems? Does the buck stop with Connie or Yank Loveless? That's the text question. Well, I, you know, I'm trying to figure that out. 
I, I don't know. I don't know who's running things. Well, Yank Loveless is the mayor. I, I understand that, but then I have people come to me in secret and say, and I'm not calling any names. This would have happened, but somebody besides the mayor pulled the plug, and that bothers me. Well, okay, and uh, uh, but, 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 let's, let's, but, but, but let's talk about this, Greg. The, what what is the bottom line to that right there? To yeah. that point, you just made. You know, people come to you and say, well, the mayor pulled the plug on this or, or, or he didn't make this decision or that decision. I know Yank Loveless personally, and I can tell you uh, he has always been a decisive person, in my opinion, uh, good, bad, or indifferent. I, I've never known him not to make a decision when he needed to make a decision. So, you know, and if, he if tells com- me that. He tells me he may. He may but, I have no doubt that he makes know, those decisions. I may be wrong, but that's my opinion. Yeah, I just you're you're always going to hear something in town. You're always going to hear things out there. But you know, I get a I got a, a a private message the other day, and I know who sent it, but they wanted to be anonymous, so I'm going to give them that benefit. I'm not sure, but they told me, and I don't know if this is true now. This rumor hearsay, give it whatever label you want. I don't know this to be a fact that there was a Sonic wanted to come where the car wash is going. So we're talking maybe a one point five million dollar franchise, I would assume. But Sonic's probably a million five too, whatever. And that that got stopped, and the car wash was coming, and they called off a name other than the mayor's name and said this person caused it. So once I again, can't, that's hearsay. Yeah, now. yeah, and I think it's very important. I think it's absolutely important to say that's hearsay. That's hearsay, and, and, and that's where, and that's kind well, of where I'm going with it from the beginning. That's when it gets reckless, <clears throat> right? And that's that's when we have to discuss it intelligently. We really have to kind of see this thing I would, clearly. I would hope yeah. we know that. Yeah. I would hope that us yeah. citizens and taxpayers. Sure. Would have the opportunity to voice our opinion on whether we want a sure. a, a laundromat or a Sonic or a Wendy. Well, I, I can tell you, I, I know the, who's putting. I know the guy putting the uh, car wash in, and I had a conversation with him last week, and he told me that uh, there there's talk of a Sonic coming in next to him, yeah. uh, not necessarily where he. Was that there was another guy actually looking at doing a car wash here, uh, according to to, uh, to David Floyd, who, who was behind this project. And uh, David, I know David through some business dealings, and uh, David said that uh, he kind of beat the guy to the punch, you yeah. know, with with the car wash. But but as far as it, David, what she was asking me as far as the city, how I, the way I wish things was done is that it was public. There was. Ads in the paper, and and I'm guilty. I don't read the Bruton Standard all the time, but I wish there was notifications. Maybe, maybe, maybe Facebook, no, something telling you, hey, sure, this is important. Bruton, you need to come to City Hall. We need packed out house. We got opportunities to have this, this, or this, and then I would want the 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 council to be involved, and then ultimately the mayor. Well, you know, I I just want to kind of go back just for a second, and and and. I think you've done an exceptional job here tonight in terms of approaching it and explaining it and trying to get your message out there. A lot of times, people try to sway opinions based on hearsay. I mean, yep. to, to, to be fair to the people involved, we don't know that to be a fact. That's why I called it like exactly. it is. Yeah, we don't know. We don't, we don't know to be a fact. And, and, and I think it's just very important. Not you know, the, I don't know who it was that told you. It doesn't matter who told you. But I think it's also safe to say that person could have an agenda against a couple that's, of people at City Hall. That's correct. I mean, so, I mean, th- this thing, uh, and this goes back to what I said at the beginning of the show, it's the people of this town that has made it what it is for so many years, certainly in my lifetime. I have seen a shift in the last 10 to 15 years where we are not as together as we once were. But if we could ever, if we could ever get everybody on the same page, I'm not saying sing Kumbaya downtown Bruton. No. I'm just saying recognize that everybody has something to offer. Everybody. That's right. That's We've right. got a lot of assets in this community in terms of people. And if we start pulling this rope in the same direction, then what can we do? And that's the bottom line. That well, is. Yeah. Somebody sent me a, a, a message the other day and said that Cindy's family and your family were, were vested here and, and, and their family – and the, the, you know that ultimately the the families have put a lot of money in the community and donations and stuff and but and 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 you have a 
and more of an right to an opinion. But that's not, sure. you know, I don't, I, I, somewhat I agree with that. Some, you know, hey, I don't care if somebody's been here and put their kid in the first grade and they're in the fifth grade. If they live here and they love Bruton, they would have a right. They would have an opinion. And so I'm for everybody getting well, you, together and having a, you, you know. You have no idea how glad I am that you brought that up. And uh, I, I told you when we came in here, there'd be no script. You know, we were just going to yeah. go and we were going to talk about things. We were going to speak from the heart. Hopefully, we'd have open minds, have clear hearts. And I think that's yeah. happened here tonight. I have a close group of friends who are not from here. Yeah. And I let them know it every chance I get in tongue in cheek. But the fact of the matter is, they're some of the best citizens we have in town. Sure, sure. Always raising a hand, wanting to help, wanting to offer uh, whatever they have in, in terms of talents or or. or or assets to, to be a part of the solution. And you're right. It's all of us. And that's kind of what we hit on the beginning. We need more people taking ownership in this town. It belongs to every single one of us. The school yeah. systems, whether it's uh, Bruton City, W.S. Neal, Flomington, it belongs to all of us. And all, it's going to take all of us to make sure that we thrive into the years ahead. Take, right. Tell you what, DJ, let's, uh, let's take one last break. Come back. We're still getting a bunch of text messages in. So uh, we'll come back and answer those questions. And uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes. Studio B, Greg Fleming, Ken James, and myself enjoying good, healthy dialogue here with Greg, getting some issues out there, getting some different viewpoints. We really appreciate those of you that have texted in. Like to get a few more phone calls and uh, get your uh, ideas, questions, input, whatever the case may be, on things that affect all of us. Uh, next text up, uh, and keeping uh, trying to keep the order going here. Uh, Greg is quick to voice your opinion. Uh, why don't you get more involved? Why don't you run for the city council? Thought about that, and I am considering that maybe. I, that's a that is a possibility. I, I'm, you know, I guarantee you that uh, that would uh, stir up some uh, passion right there for do, sure. Do you think Greg would speak for the people in District One? I, I think the people in District. I, I live in District One, so. Uh, you know, I, I, I think he definitely would speak for the people in District 1. The, that's only, for sure. the only concern I have, if Greg chose to do that, if he was successful, would he make the city council meetings in January and through February 10th? <laughs> <laughs> he just said, go ahead and put me down. The rut's on. I won't be there. I, I'm passionate about hunting. But <laughs> yeah, I won't be we'll there. Make an exception for the people. Uh, <laughs> I will not make it. Uh, next up, uh, Greg, how do you feel about the hotel? Uh, let's see. How do you feel about the hotel that was being renovated? Uh, that was uh, being auctioned off in foreclosure. Another empty building in Bruton. Well, I just I just read those signs of the day. I I seen those, and those are friends of mine, and I think a lot of them, but uh, of, of the owners. But I seen the signs, and I was I hated to see that because we we you know 
obviously we need uh, lodging yeah, here. We, we do need lodging here. People call me. I've had people to want to know if I would be interested in maybe some rooms at my house, or you know, which I I love everybody. You stay for could free, the, but yeah. I couldn't charge. Could the could the Fort Fleming Fort Fleming be a bed and breakfast? No, no, <laughs> no. I I like to wear my boxers and watch TV, and so anyway. hit hit the gun, hit the gun. Hold on, we got a call coming in. <laughs> Go ahead, caller. The number that's going across the screen, is that going to the text? Oh, my gosh. Yes, it is. Oh, my gosh. I recognize that voice. I recognize that voice, too. (laughs) Okay. uh, I figure he's getting ready to go hunting. Probably so. It's about his time. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Let's see here. Next question. Uh... Let's see. I got to get man. That's a long one. Uh, okay, I'm just gonna. I'm gonna try to read some of it. Jackson Thomas would love to know why we spent the kind of money on all aluminum docks and bridge in Alco. That's a hundred thousand dollars worth of walkway. That if you had a counter up, you would probably wouldn't get five people a month walk across it. It's nice, yes, a nice, less costly all wooden pier. Would have served just as well. Uh, I've got an opinion on it. Okay. And we've talked about everybody taking ownership in Bruton, and we're all in this thing together. Okay. Alco's in Bruton. Alco's a, Alco's a big part of Bruton. Uh, some of the greatest families in our town have uh, have been over in Alco. There's no doubt about that. You can't question that. And when you see different capital improvements going on in this part of town, that part of town, this part of town... You have to encompass everybody. I mean, you, know, you you have to put money over there. You absolutely have to. I understand what, what JT's saying in terms of, of possible use or whatnot, but those people over there matter. I mean, you can't sit there and put X number of dollars on, on, on West End or X number of dollars in Belleville or up at Alexander Heights and, and, and not put it in Alco. So uh, the fact that whatever project goes on in any of our communities or any of our neighborhoods, uh, that, that's just the way the game's going to be played. And, and personally, I don't have a problem with it. What do you think about that, Greg? Well, I <laughs> I questioned the mayor about it in his office, and 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 as to the cost, I was told that the the cost was far more than a hundred thousand. Uh, I was told more like a quarter of a million, but the mayor assured me it wasn't that price. I I don't remember exactly what he said, but um, I I don't know. I don't know if treated timbers made for piers and 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 docks and stuff in in at the beach. It, you know, as far as st- what you build houses on down there, I don't know if that would have been a better solution with treated treated lumber or not. Uh, I don't know if the you know it's if it's over a hundred grand. It's it's a lot of money to me. Let but, me throw this but, out but there. I, I see yeah, your yeah, point. Let me let me throw this out there. When you make an investment like that in a neighborhood, what could be the outcome with the people who live there? Do they all of a sudden? And I'm not saying that they don't take pride, but I'm saying all of a sudden they see a they see an investment on the city. Then all of a sudden, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, enhance my property, and it enhances the property values as a whole because you have some infrastructure in place. And I can just tell you this, a stronger Alco makes for a stronger Bruton. Absolutely. A a stronger North Pine makes a stronger Bruton. So anytime we get a chance to invest in our different neighborhoods, I think it's a win-win-win. Yeah. I don't think there's any doubt about that. And those Uh, could have been grants or something, too. That money probably was, you know. Well, yeah. For parks and stuff. Uh, more on, let me see here, where that, uh, well, I had that pulled up, and, and, and uh, let's see, where did that go? Oh, well, okay. Next question, uh, Greg, or Ken, would I vote for? Greg, why or why not in uh, in District One? Well, I'll be honest with you, I'm kind of like Greg I, 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 and DJ too. I, I make my mind up based off of a lot of different factors. But uh, one good thing about voting here, and the bottom line to it is, we get to keep that to ourselves. So <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. You know, I want to. I'll get to the bottom line of it all. But when it comes to voting, I got to be honest with you. I mean, that's yeah. one of those things. Like Greg mentioned a while ago, he had some. Somebody in this household voted one way, and the other voted another. And, we did. and I can't you know? remember how it went, but we—that's the way it was. 
uh, you know, and, and uh, talking about the Alco area, you know, I we live up here in, in I guess you would call them, you know, not North Bruton, but, uh, you know, out this way. And, and uh, I've been over to Alco to the parks over there uh, several times and, and took my daughter over there to, to play on the park. And uh, I, I find it's a, a beautiful place to go, as well as, as uh, uh, the Jennings Park, yeah. uh, the O'Bannon area, uh, the bridge that, that goes over there. I can't tell you how many times I need to walk it a lot more, uh, <laughs> yeah. but uh, can't tell you how many times I've, I've, you know, my wife and I and daughter, we've took our dogs down there and, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it, it's just a great, a great place, a great, uh, great place to go. And, 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 you know, as you both, both pointed out, a, a better Alco makes for a better brew. Oh, that's yeah. for sure. No, no question. Uh, next text that I got was uh, uh, Greg. Uh, do you approve of your son's elephant tattoo? I love it. I mean, if that's you know, I'm I I, I got on them about several things and when they were young, you know, wanting a, a a near ring or a nose ring or whatever. But uh, I, I, yeah, I'm fine with that. Um, if that that's what he wants, as long as it's tasteful. But you know, I sort of give my opinion about it. I said maybe you ought to wait a while and. Of course he didn't. But, oh well. And that that was my you know I tell him wait and think it out and then come back. Uh, let's see, man. I mean they are coming in just. Uh, I mean just just by the. I'm not lying. I can't keep up with them. They're coming so fast. Uh, Greg, what what do you what would you think about a dog park? I. I I don't have much opinion about that one. I mean, I, you know, the thing about the dog park, some people are going to use it, but you, you're a lot of these things you're going to have to maintain. You're going to have to insure it in case somebody gets bit. Somebody's going to have to to maintain it, upkeep it, maintenance. Um, somebody's got to pick poop up. Somebody's got to <laughs> mow grass, and I just don't. Is there, but unless it's grant money and grant money is going to keep it up, or is the city going to have to pay to keep it up, or is, is you know, and if it's our money, what can we do to you better impact the community, uh, the people? I mean, is there arts, music, um, programs for the kids, veterans, homeless? Well, I mean, I know we don't have a lot of home, but I'm just saying, is there, is there money is on sick people? Is there something we can do to impact more? And let's also uh, get this out there, and, and I know that we're all going to agree on this to a certain point. There's only so much money that we have to work with. That's right. I mean, it's not like there's an endless supply of it. Uh, you know, you, you, you have what you have, and you can do what you can do. And I'll be honest with you, uh, not everything that happens up at City Hall I agree with, but they've done a lot of good things the last four years, if you're going to be fair about it. I mean, you know, they, they've done some nice things. Could some things uh, have been done differently or maybe more efficiently? Probably. I would, I would th certainly think so, but you could say that about anybody that sits up there. Yeah. Well, let me ask you this. Uh, as far as the dog park, and, you know, and I, I know uh, i got a good friend here in town that's compassionate about that, loves to walk her dog and all that, and there were dog parks where she come from. But can't we take a dog to Jennings Park? Can we take a – I don't see why not. I think – I thought I've seen them. Again. Well, I, I think – and I, listen, I, I'm passionate about dogs. You know, I have uh, – love mine. And I do too. And, you know, yeah. but I think – more so probably about the dog park thing would be a fenced in dog park area that people could take their dogs and let run and that kind of thing that maybe live in a neighborhood or, or someplace that they don't have where their dogs can stretch their legs out you know and, and we we i think bruton has a if in dj or greg y'all may know this they have a leash law that i i think i'm aware of so it's hard to take a dog to Jennings yeah. Park and turn him loose. Well, the you know park was going to be yeah. across from Progressive Bank, wasn't it? Right there. I, I'm not sure. I, See, I, that, I don't know. Bannon, that's what I was told months ago. So, I, I, uh, Another question that came in, DJ, this was for you. The question earlier was not about Alco. It was about cost. Well, I know this. Projects cost money. Uh, they chose to do a project in Alco, which once again... Uh, a project in Alco is probably deserving when you're doing projects all over town. Uh, could it have been, could a cheaper project have, have, have maybe been designed? Possibly. 
But uh, I, I understood the question the first time. Thanks. Uh, 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 you know, ten four. Uh, <laughs> and that's the bottom line. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> bottom line. <laughs> uh, Greg, this one's for you. Uh, uh-huh. Do you think that the city can justifiably keep the city golf course open? Uh, this texter said he here or they hear it loses money every year. And and from my understanding, has. Um, I'll tell you, it's just like the, the country club here and a, and, a, and, a, and a country club anywhere else or a golf resort anywhere else. It takes thousands of rounds a, a year, probably a month, to break even. So, I, you know, I want the golf course to stay there. I don't play as much on it as I'd like to. Occasionally I get to go play. I wish there was a way to figure that out, but I'm I'm – I'm sure it's having to have funds put in from other places to keep it going. So, you know, how long it can sustain to do that? That's that. That's the question. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know how long it can last doing that if you're taking monies from other places. Next texter wants to know, Greg, uh, who should be the Bruton Citizen of the Year? Oh wow. I'll tell I'll t- I'll t- I'll tell you this, and and. Um, I think she tries to do a lot of good. I try to keep up with a lot of things she, she's she's involved in and doing. But I'll tell you, one of the sweetest women in the world, and I don't think she'd mind me you know, saying her name, but I'll tell you, Edith O'Leary Kelly, retired Air Force, and she's compassionate about rooting. Hadn't been here but a few years, but she married a local guy. His daddy was my parents' insurance man, Kendrick Kelly. Good, great people. And she... Is a you know she would be on top of my list as as someone who cares about the community and tries to be involved in civic things and and um, you know it's a good lady. I got a little bottom line trivia for you. Absolute TBL TBL trivia. Yeah, you just mentioned Edie Kelly and her husband Tim Kelly. Yeah, uh, born and raised here. Great people. Tim Kelly and I don't think he'll mind me saying this. <clears throat> in his little league slash Babe Ruth baseball career. He got one hit. Guess who it was off of? I'd say you. It was. <laughs> off of you. It absolutely was. It absolutely was. But those, those, those to me are fine people. We, we've, we've, had, we've had another. <laughs> some of the best. We've some had another text come in that says uh, Susan Rhodes should be uh, citizen of the year. Does a lot of good things. Susan does a lot she's for this community. Yep. She does. A lot she of good does. Uh, I think she's with the Women's Business uh, yeah. uh, Council. Does a lot of, a lot of good things for this community that, that she, uh, never really. I, I don't think she gets the credit she deserves either. And she's an Auburn fan. That can't. That, that's got to help her. <laughs> she's a great person. No, so. she is. Uh, Susan, she is a great, she, person. She is a great person. There's no Once doubt about again, that. This kind of goes back to what we're talking about. How many worthy candidates are there in Bruton? This, the, oh, the list is endless. There's a lot of them. The people. Endless. I mean, you, you, we said it earlier, people. I mean, the, Bruton's full of good people, full of good things, uh, uh, people that make the difference, that's for sure. Uh, I'll tell you what, um, if you, you know, will you, y'all keep them coming. Uh, they were coming fast and furious. Here we go. We got another one coming in. Um, Greg, how do you feel about uh, New Beginnings? I, I I don't know a lot about them. I've heard good things and I've heard bad things, or, or or people that 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 wasn't so crazy about them. That you know, um, I got a cousin to go there. He was having some problem with alcohol from another state. And he came here to stay, and uh, was just drinking himself to death at my home. So I talked him into going over there and and went and helped him get in and and get started. But and 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 he broke loose in two weeks and ran away from there. So you know, I I think that if they help one person get off of drugs, or one person get right with the Lord, uh, how can you, you know, how can you be against it? So, if they help one person, they've 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 done yeah, good. Yeah. So I I don't I don't know. I, they seem like great people. I'm, I'm friends with them on Facebook. With I think it's Sam and Bo. Seem like great people. I'm I'm passionate. I was a cop for four years in the eighties. I'm passionate about I, I, people. I, I don't like drugs. I don't want to see people on drugs. Uh, it tears the home apart. So if they helping those people, and I see people holding these certificates that says I'm I'm graduating, I'm straight. So 
you know, and and and, and I did go to a funeral at the church the other day, and that was that was you know, it, it's a nice place. So I'm I'm going to say I'm with it, you know. Uh JT, another text from JT, putting oh, his name with it. Oh, good <laughs> Lord. Uh, Here well, we go. Greg, he wants to know how you feel about the way. Uh, uh, I, I don't really uh, how the way cut handles the way the don't did out bid out jobs. Uh, I guess he means uh, how do you feel about the way the city handles the way they don't bid out jobs to other people that are just as or more qualified as the ones doing it? Is it fair that they don't bid anything under sixty thousand dollars, or do you think they should give other businesses a chance? Other businesses most definitely should have the right to bid. And have the have the opportunity here, and I brought that up with the mayor. So I'm I'm an advocate that anybody anywhere ought to be able to come here and bid on one of our jobs. What what was that? Uh, a follow up, I guess, from me. What what was the mayor's uh, answer to that? I, you know, I never did get what I wanted to hear. So I, you know, I can't remember that the the mayor had me in his office and he wanted me to see. Everything, you know, he had lots of, um, I'm going to call them easels or some type of art thing to hold art. He had stuff all in a room around the room. He went through there. He spent two hours with me after work one day showing, wanted me to see what was all he was in the process or what was in the works for Bruton. But I would, I would bring up things like, you know, I see the same person doing this uh, job here with the utility department all the time. Why is this not bid it out? Why does other people from, you know, Monroeville or Montgomery, why are they not being able to bid and and, and, and win a bid here and, and come in and do? And I think that if one person's got a monopoly on it, how's the taxpayer going to get a break? You know? Is it a $200,000 job, really? Or could somebody else come in and do it for $175,000? Are you suggesting they're not taking bids on these I projects? Don't, I, don't, I, didn't get the, I didn't get what I wanted. Okay. I didn't get the straight answer okay. that I wanted. And and maybe maybe you know maybe the mayor didn't understand. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure I laid it out there like I wanted. But I think this is, this is what I believe, that you can't save if you don't know what the other guy wants. Let me ask you this as a counterpoint, and uh, I don't know the different thresholds, but I do know there are pretty stringent bid laws. You know, if you get over X number of dollars, you have no choice but to bid it out. I want to say it's over $10,000. I'm not going to swear to it, but I'm going to use that as a number. So if it's over $10,000 in terms of a project and spending, and you bid it out, all right, Greg, you submit your bid here as a local company or, or, or have local ties, or the case may be. And you're at ten thousand five hundred dollars, and I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and I come in and I spend it. Uh, I turn in a bid of ten thousand dollars, and I do know this to be a fact. When you talk about bid laws, you can give local companies extra consideration if they're within like three percent of the low bid. You know, you have to take the low bid when it's bid it out. You have, or you can reject all bids. Yeah, but if you if you award a bid, it has to be the low bid. Unless it's a local entity and they're within three percent of the low bid, so me as a as a as a city leader, would I not give it to the person who has local ties, who's going to spend that money in Bruton, going to hire people in Bruton, going to you know buy their groceries in Bruton, eat their meals in Bruton, buy their gas in Bruton, or do I give the money to Birmingham where it's going to go to Vestavia, Mountain Brook, wherever the school system may be? And I'm just throwing that out there as, as a counterpoint to it. Well, I, I, and I see your point on that, but I, I just believe that. If it's big municipal projects, sure, and I'm going to be helping pay for it. You're going to be helping pay for okay. it, and uh, all of our friends out there, out of City Hall, are going to be paying for it. I just think that that um, we should be entertaining bids, and you know, and, I, and and like I say, if things are close, maybe give some consideration. But I can tell you, I've been involved in bids before. Yeah, I've sat in bid meetings. Yeah. And you go to 20 of them, and you may not win none of them. Mm -hmm. So if one person's getting all the bids, that's not possible. It's not possible. So I'm just thinking that, that, and and I get your point about the money going to other other areas, Mm -hmm. but we also don't know that person's not 
investing and banking their money in other cities anyway. And that's why we get the chance to revote every so often. If you ever, if yeah. you ever have an opinion that, or if you ever have a feeling that things are not being done uh, on, on the above board way, we have an opportunity. You know, and, yeah. and this goes back, you know, to four years ago. One of the things that disappointed me losing, or excuse me, finishing third. <laughs> <laughs> Finishing third was disappointing in and of itself. My dad had been the mayor for 24 years prior to that election. Yep. So for all practical purposes, our town was electing a mayor for the first time in 24 years. Yep. And right at a thousand people voted. And that was it. And that's not good. It's not good. <laughs> no. And that, and, that, and, that, and that goes back to taking ownership and not 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 when you see something on Facebook that, sp- that spurs you a little bit. I'm talking about day in and day out. We need to take ownership in this town. That's right. And uh, just like we've done here tonight, this has been a healthy conversation. Uh, we've had some, we, we've disagreed on some different things, but uh, Bruton needs to wake up. Yeah, let, let, me, let me tell you, DJ, uh, maybe a little off point, but look, I left Bruton at 19 to go to the Marine Corps. Thank you for your service. And I, Thank you. You're welcome. I stayed gone four years. In that process, I was a police officer for much of that four years for the Marine Corps. And I uh, put in for embassy duty and was accepted, highly accepted. And I chose Finland, Sweden, and Switzerland to go. Go ahead, caller. Confused about y'all's last little conversation about the bid. Okay. What do you? What? Do you, what? Is the city not? Is the city not taking bids? No, just a war. I, I don't. I have no clue because I don't go to city council meetings. We we are not suggesting that at all. Uh, no, uh, we we have we have in no way, shape, or form yeah. uh, said that the city does not take bids. There was just some question on how bids are awarded. Okay, all right, because they have to take bids. Yeah, correct? Well, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we, we had a text. We had yeah. a text come in that was asking the question about uh, the bid process. And yeah. to be perfectly honest, okay. n- none of us here, none of us here know the, the 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 ins and outs of that. But yeah, there's there's pretty stringent bid laws, yeah. and I have no doubt that the city is doing things by the letter of the law. There was just some question or concern uh-huh. uh, on Greg's part on how the bids are awarded. He had a question that one yeah. company was getting all the bids, and yeah. statistically speaking, in his mind, that's impossible. Yeah. We just hope they're following the rules. I just to clarify that because I was I was confused. I'm sure there maybe were some other listeners confused as well on that. Well, thank you for your call. Okay. Bye. So you know, uh, tell you what. Uh, but, I, 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 go ahead, Greg. Back to your point. Anyway, yeah, three, I, yeah, I'm I, I chose three other countries to go to and was accepted to go to the to embassy school. But let me tell you, man, I thought about it hard and. I couldn't wait to get back to Bruton. So I, when my, my time was up, I declined reenlistment, declined the choice duty I wanted because I wanted to be back here. I love Bruton. And let me say this. Thank God you did because I had some great times at Mickey Finn's. <laughs> hey, you, you're, you're never. It's funny you mentioned that. I've had a text over here just just a, a, a minute or two ago that said, uh, "Greg, have you and Cindy thought about opening Mickey Fans again?" Yes. Let me tell you, Mickey Fans is like what well, we just got off of the Marine Corps. It's something I glad I, I'm glad I did. <laughs> it's something I'll never do again. <laughs> but I'll come to some younger person's place. You know. <laughs> it was uh, it was it was Roadhouse, and he and Greg was Patrick Swayze. Yes, he, he, was was. he was the cooler. He was the cooler. He was the cooler. He was the cooler. Hey, listen, we're gonna take one. La- well, I said the last break while ago, but this thing has went, went on so well. We're yeah. gonna take one last break. Uh, we'll be back in just a few minutes.
back in Studio B. One last segment. Once again, Greg Fleming, the guest here at the uh, the pilot episode, I guess, the inaugural show of The wow. Bottom Line. And Ken, and we were talking about it while we were off air. Uh, you and I thought that we would have a chance to maybe pull something off here and do something that would be of benefit to the community. We certainly had some positive feedback here tonight, and uh, I'm really excited the direction this thing may go. I, I am too, and I tell you again, I want to I want to thank Greg for coming in and uh, and 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 being on the uh, the the first uh, uh, pilot episode, the first episode of the, the Bottom Line. At, uh, what a great. Uh, a great thing to come in and sit down and answer these questions and, and you know we promised that we were gonna ask get you know hard questions tough questions and get real answers and i and i think we've done that here tonight well i want to say this and you know we uh greg knows this about me I'm a, I'm a straight shooter i like to get things down there where the billy goats can eat it yep. and uh i don't mind telling you you were not the first person we approached to be on the first show tonight but everything happens for a reason and now an hour and a half into it I think you were the perfect person to have here, and I appreciate, I appreciate you it. coming. I, I it. absolutely agree with that 180% for sure. I, I was worried about path rowing, but you know what? I'm, I'm amazed. It's all been good to me. Nobody's, you know, I haven't had to take a punch. So. <laughs> again, again, that's what that, that's, that's not what this show is about, I mean, yeah, at all. It's you been know. good. It's been great. Not trying to, to go there. Uh, did have another another text come in. Uh, Greg, what do you think about having a reality show centered around you and, and the fam? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to tell you. I, listen, you should, the Osborne, Ozzy Osborne, hey, they've got rich hey. off of that, Greg. Oh, I mean, Fort, Fort Fleming would be a vacation destination. People from all over the country <laughs> would travel to Fort Fleming. That would be great. That would be awesome. Cindy's as tough as I am. We've, we've been together twenty about 29 years. So. Oh. Oh. Uh, also, I want to remind those listening in that uh, this will be archived. This show is archived, so if you've missed a part of it or if you have friends that are family that may not uh, caught it tonight, they can go to the Facebook page. It'll take you to the YouTube account, find the bottom line show, and uh, my understanding, Ken, is it'll be there forever. It will be there forever if you uh, if it just. It also, we want you to subscribe to that YouTube page if you if you will. Uh, if you if you uh, click up to that top right button and then click subscribe. Uh, that'll help us get the uh, viewership up and uh, get let us spread the uh, spread the the news a little further. And uh, hopefully, uh, I was just telling Greg off uh, off camera and off off the mic, uh, kind of what a plan later on down the road might be. And uh, you know, I, I, uh, we we would really really like to have uh, to have Greg back. I think I think for sure, Greg will definitely be a mainstay here at the bottom line, DJ. No question. Uh, you know, I I, I think. Uh, I think that uh, it's been a good time, a, a good night. I mean, I, I, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of text participation uh, for sure. I'm, I'm getting just blown up with them over here, or have been most of the night. I know you've been uh, hit up on your phone there, and I've seen Greg even hit up on his. Uh, listen uh, again, uh, this show will be on YouTube, so uh, you can you can check it out anytime. It'll be public, and uh, it'll be there to watch. Well, Ken, let's get this out there. Also, you know, this is for our community. Uh, if you have an idea of a show, somebody we should uh, uh, approach to have on or some issues you want talked about, uh, write us on Facebook, text Ken or I, make a phone call, whatever. We want to do and bring what you guys want to hear and listen to and discuss. Uh, that's the way it works the best. Um, and uh, we, we, we want to be a service provider for the community. And like I said in the beginning, if, if it ever gets to the point where we don't think this is doing some real good, the plug will be pulled. Yeah, uh, absolutely. No question and, about that. And, 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 and as much as we're talking about the community, real quick, uh, I want to talk about uh, uh, Brooke Bridges. Uh, yes, you know, still, uh, uh, still hunting. Uh, the, the, our community is still uh, local law enforcement and and uh, public uh, uh, fire department. I'm sure. You know, I think they've had the search team out. I know that they've. Uh, uh, you know, still looking for Brooke, 16 year old, and uh, you know we uh, we wish the uh, our, our public officials, uh, our, our public servants, uh, all the, the the best in the world uh, uh, to find Brooke. I know Greg had mentioned a little earlier that uh, I didn't know that you said they'd found or gotten some ping a ping off of I her phone. I was told that earlier that they had something to do with the telephone was somebody had seen that. You know, we had uh, talk, we, we've talked about social media 
and we can talk. You can use it in a, in a negative sense or a positive sense. Mm-hmm. You know, one of the things you've seen on Facebook, how many people have shared the information on uh, on Brooke? Yes. You know, and, and, and that's what I'm talking about in terms of trying to tear people down, trying to tear our community down. You know, anything that we can do to help bring closure for this family. I mean, your heart has to go out to them. You, you Absolutely. obviously, you obviously yeah. keep the, the, the first responders and in, in our thoughts and prayers and, and hope that this thing comes to it, to a close and in a, in a happy close. Uh, yes. My hopes, and, I, and I'm sure I'll speak for everybody here is that they're going to find Brooke somewhere safely, but uh, let's continue to, to share that information and get it out and, and uh, hopefully and that'll be the case. Yeah. Let's pray for her, yeah. her safe return. That's for sure. Uh, Greg, listen again, Oh, uh, it's about, uh, we're about, uh, what, eight, seven, eight minutes away from 10 o'clock. So yeah. I, I want to again tell you, thank you so much for, for coming in and, and sitting down on the, uh, on the first episode of the bottom line. Uh, you've answered a lot of questions. I think you've been real open and real honest. And I think you've given the bottom line of everything that's been asked of you. Uh, I know I feel that way. Greg, you know, you came in and you sit over in that chair and you have hand grenades thrown at your head. It's not easy <laughs> to do. Uh, kind of echoing what, what, what Ken said. Thank you for coming in and being a I part of it. it. I want to thank the people that participated tonight. Things were not perfect, but I feel like we're off to a good start here. We look forward to bringing another program uh, to everybody next week. It's going to be a fluid situation, but we'll uh, be sure to make sure that you know when it's going to air and have plenty of time to join us and be a part of the show. And and uh, if anything comes out of tonight, I want it to be this. We have to work together. We're going to live together. Everybody has something to offer. It's not going to be the same opinion. It's not going to be the same ideas. Disagreeing is fine. Let's just be respectful about it. That's right. If we do that, it'll make for a better Bruton, and that's the bottom line. I say it. That, uh, you couldn't have said it no better. In the more words of uh, David Jennings, and, and for David Jennings, I'm Ken James. For Greg Fleming, stay classy, Bruton. <laughs> Bottom Line was brought to you by Boss Man Productions. The views expressed by Colin Gaster in studio guests are not necessarily those of the Bottom Line, the host, Boss Man Productions, other advertisers, or any affiliate of the Bottom Line. The Bottom Line is for entertainment purposes only.